We are asked to determine whether this integral is convergent or divergent, and you are probably completing this problem within the context of improper integrals. Normally, an improper integral problem will have either an infinity or a negative infinity, or even sometimes both, for the upper or lower bounds. But here we don't have that, so this doesn't look at first like an improper integral. However, what we did is we graphed the function 5 over the cube root of x minus 1. And we can see from the graph that there is a break in the graph. And it's located at exactly x equals 1. It might be hard to tell from the scale here, but at x equals 1, there is a break in the graph. It's actually an infinite discontinuity. And we might have even been able to tell that without graphing it, because if we plug 1 into this function, we would end up with 5 divided by 0 which is undefined. So we can tell that something fishy is going on when x is equal to 1. If you consider the bounds of integration here, we are integrating from 0 all the way to 9. But again, something fishy is going on at x equals 1. So we have to find a way of accounting for that fishiness. And what we're going to do is actually break this problem up into two separate integrals. For the first integral, we will evaluate using the bounds from 0 to 1. And then for the second integral, we will evaluate from 1 to 9. And if from 0 to 1 is convergent and also 1 to 9 is convergent, then the overall integral will indeed be convergent. But if either one or both of those are divergent, then the answer would be divergent. So we have to take a look at what's going to happen. So we'll evaluate the first integral. It's going to be from 0 to 1. And then our function is 5 over, and we're going to rewrite the cube root as x minus 1 raised to the power of one third, and this will be with respect to x. Now again, one is a problematic value because it's undefined within this function if we were to plug it in. So we actually have to undergo a technique that we learned in this section. We will replace the one with a variable. Typically we use t in these problems. And as long as we take the limit as t approaches one from the left, then we're going to be all right. Notice we're approaching one from the left. If you go back and look at this number line, we have our bounds from zero to one, and we're going to be approaching one from the left side of one. So we'll put a little minus sign to indicate that. And then we're going to have to find a way to integrate this expression. Now normally what we do is we drop the bounds, we take an aside essentially, and we try to integrate. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to rewrite this by doing five and then we're going to do x minus 1 raised to the negative 1 third. And really to evaluate this, we'd have to do a u substitution. So we will let u equal the x minus 1. And then we differentiate both sides. We get du is equal to 1 dx. Then our integral becomes 5 times u to the negative 1 third du. And then we'll just integrate. This is an easy integral. We add 1 to that power, and we're going to get 2 thirds. And then we multiply by the reciprocal of that power, which is 3 halves. So we end up with 15 halves u to the 2 thirds. We can go back now and replace the u with the x minus 1. And now we can actually put the bounds back on as well. So let's return to the original problem. We're going to do the limit as t approaches 1 from the left of this 15 halves x minus 1 raised to the power of 2 thirds evaluated from 0 to t. And of course, we plug the upper bound in first. So we're going to plug in t first. We do have to continue to write the limit in front here. And then we will subtract the value we obtain by plugging in the lower bound. Like so. So now we're going to basically let t approach 1. And what that really means is you can plug 1 now into the expression. And you'll notice that it is permissible to plug 1 in now because we will not get an undefined result. We have 1 minus 1 here. And then minus the 15 halves times negative 1 to the power of 2 thirds. Now, for the first expression here, 1 minus 1 is 0, so this whole thing is going to 0 out. And then you're left with negative 15 halves multiplied by negative 1 to the 2 thirds. Now, you could use a calculator here, or you could recall that you can rewrite negative 1 to the 2 thirds power as the cube root of negative 1 
all of which would be squared. Now the cube root of negative one is negative one, and then negative one squared is positive one. So you end up with negative 15 halves times one, which of course is negative 15 halves. So that first integral actually is convergent. And now we're going to explore the second integral. It's basically the same process, except now our bounds will change from one to nine. So we'll come down here, we'll evaluate that second integral. We're gonna go from one to nine, of our original five over the cube root of x minus one dx. Now, again, we have to rewrite this using limit notation because one renders this expression undefined. So we'll replace the one with t, and then this will be an upper bound of nine still. This time, we're gonna do the limit as t approaches one from the right-hand side. And because our expression is still the same we don't have to go through all the u substitution we can kind of cut to the chase here and get the results so you're going to have the limit as t approaches one from the right and if you recall when we integrated we had gotten 15 halves x minus one to the two thirds it's the same integral so the same result from a lower bound of t to an upper bound of nine we'll plug the upper bound in first So you're gonna have nine minus one, which is eight. So we'll go right to it, eight to the two thirds, and then minus 15 halves, t minus one to the two thirds. Same result here, right? Because t is approaching one. So when you plug one in for this t, you're gonna get one minus one, which is zero. This whole thing zeroes out. You're left with 15 halves times the cube root of eight, all of which would be squared. The cube root of eight is two, two squared is four. You multiply this out and you're going to get 30. So now all we have to do is add the first integral, which was the negative 15 halves, to the second integral. And then that's gonna give us our answer. So we'll take negative 15 halves and add that to 30. And when you do this calculation, and I'm not sure if you need it in decimal or fraction notation, but decimally speaking, you're going to get, good Lord, I'm punching this into my calculator and I'm struggling. So you get 22.5. And then if you want that as a fraction, you're going to get 45 halves. And this indeed would be the correct answer to the question. So it is a convergent integral because both of the individual integrals converged.